spend three weeks in the open air with sand and cactus in my hair. Give me back my rocking chair. I'm glad the roundup's over. Never be the same. My legs are sore and my back is lame. I've never known such awful pain. I'm glad the roundup's over. If my gal put a wrangle steers, I'll bet she shed a quart of tears. The last three weeks have been like years. I'm glad the roundup's over. I ate so many Johnny cakes that now my stomach pains and aches. I've never had such awful breaks. I'm glad the roundup's over. Hey, Mary, you better watch out crossing Whoop Creek. The road's washed out. Don't you worry. Old Leaping Lazy here was raised on washouts. so much time singing, maybe the old Rogers Ranch wouldn't be going broke so fast. If you'd quit galvanting around the country, maybe Whittaker City wouldn't be the next thing to a ghost town. I reckon Gabby's doing as well as any mare can, Pat. So are we. We've been out day and night, rounding up strays. Where are you heading for, Gabby? Taking some mail to Carol Stevens. Carol Stevens? Yeah, she's been up to her mine for a week. I'm scared she's going to close it down. I'm just the guy to deliver that mail. You'll never get there in this old sewing machine, Gabby. Oh. I got them letters right here in my pocket. And they ain't none of you varmints man enough to take them away from me. Is that so? Well, hand over that mail. This is an outrage. A dead burned outrage. Mr. Peter Moreland, mining engineer. Say, this is the good news Carol's been waiting for. You can have the rest. Gay young whippersnapper, you'll find me at Carol's waiting for you. I'm sorry about this, Jose, but if I can start the mine up again, you'll all have your jobs back. Goodbye. Roy, what are you doing up here? Oh, just moseying around. Uh, you haven't seen a couple of stray calves, have you? Calves? You know there aren't any calves up here. Come on, now, what are you hiding? <laughs> Give it to me. Just something you've been waiting for? Not you, certainly. Something you like better, I'm afraid. Returning your father's reports under separate cover. They are convincing, but other factors... Now I know why newspapers call their file the morgue. That's certainly what this one is. Why bother? The mine's finished. That's the last no I'm gonna get. There's no one else to write to. Dad was a great geologist, and he knew this mine was worth putting his last breath and his last cent into. Now nobody will even bother to look at it. Regrets to state he wouldn't be interested unless assured machinery was available and suggests that I write John G. McMahon. And John G. McMahon passes the buck to Harold Prentice, of Road Builders Incorporated. Transportation is very important, you know. I was hoping this mine would be the saving of Whitaker City. Oh, and it could be, Gabby, if we could only get them all up here at once to look at it. We could only rope them and hog tie them and stick their noses down that mine shaft. I've done that a thousand times. 
And then I always woke up. Well, nobody's gonna wake up this time. You know how we're gonna get them down here? We're gonna invite them to ride with the Vaqueros. But those city men probably never even heard of the Vaqueros. Eh, everybody's heard of the Vaqueros. Spirit of the old west. Whitaker City's claim to fame. Well, what if they aren't interested in the spirit of the old west? What if they don't even ride? It makes no difference. Everybody likes to be a guest of honor. Now listen, the annual ride doesn't come off for about two weeks. I got it. Did you ever hear of a singing telegram? Men like that probably get a singing telegram every day. Not this kind. Listen, young fella. I've been plagued for years by you and them cactus canaries of yours. Now at last, I'm going to put you to some use. Yes, what is it? A uh, whole bunch of cowboys, Mr. Moreland. Cowboys? Cowboys? Yes, they want to see you. I tried to tell them, but... We are the Vaqueros. We ride that the West we love will live evermore. A strong horse beneath us as they did long before. It was good for old Bill Cody and it's good enough for me. For we are the Vaqueros. The open plains, the summer rains, the footy lanes, the wagon trains, where nothing changes, we will live and die. For we are the vaqueros. He should be a vaquero. And sleep where his blanket is, the star-studded sky. And eat where the cactus goes, his bacon will fry. Living in the open ought to do him lots of good, for he should be a vaquero. He never gets out. He's lame, no doubt. He's got the gout. He's much too stout. What do you think we ought to do? Why, he should be a vaquero. 32. 44? In a little while, it may be more. Why, he should be a vaquero. 44. 32. We'll have him looking just like you. When he is a vaquero. Oh, Miss Pryor, yes? I, I'm not going to be very busy next week, am I? Uh, no. No, no, I should. <laughs> some of them big shots from the city. We're having three guests of honor this year. Three of the biggest men in the state. You mean they come out here just to ride a horse? Sure, for 10 days. Clean out into the Badlands, even. <laughs> Say, who is this guy, anyway? Local color? That's Ace Brody. He slept there 10 years come June. He only wakes up for a free drink. He was the best cattle rustler in the Badlands. He knows that country like the palm of your hand. Can anybody go on this ride? Sure. Anybody could join a wagon train or a trail herd in the old days. That's what the vaqueros are for. Keep the old spirit alive. Hey, don't you want your change? Buy the old man a drink. Leave my bags at the hotel if there is one. You two hole up in the next town. But, Joe, you heard that guy say there were three big shots coming on this ride, didn't you? Well, he was wrong. It's four. You mean on a horse? Sure, on a horse. What cop would ever think of looking for Joe Keenan on a horse? Anyway, we've lamped far enough. And this place looks like it's ripe for a facelifting. The Keenan way. Meaning those three big shots? Sure. Phone me and let me know where you are. The name will be Harmon, see? Joseph Harmon. One of these vaqueros. Chuck 
44. You haven't got one that's built closer to the ground, have you? What's happened to Gabby? It's time we were getting started. Saw him sneak off with Pat Brady. Both of them insulting each other, as usual. You might just well pay up right now. Princess Heidi's going to win in a walk. Yeah, even with that head start you managed to hand her. That desert tornado is still too good for her, you old mesquite bush. Well, fellas, in the name of all the old hands here, I'd like to welcome you newcomers to 10 days and nights of the kind of life that's just as real today as it ever was. The flapjacks and the coffee still taste the same. And the old coyotes still howl as loud. I know you're all going to have a swell time, but we're riding into tough country where a man's horse is more important than he is. So if your horse pulls up lame, you're going to have to get off and walk. The horse is more important than we are. <laughs> Doesn't he know who he's talking to? You're Peter Morland, aren't you? Yes. Joseph Harmon, Amalgamated Breweries, Incorporated. How do you do, sir? We'll be at the Vaquero party tonight. Down the trail we roll along In the land of destiny There's a rainbow high in the prairie sky Like the smile of eternity Down the trail we press along Till the happy day is through And we sing our song as we roll along Drop out of line, Harmon. Your horse is limping. You might have had a lame horse there. So I get another one trucked out from town. You can't make this 1890 just by wearing a six-shooter. 1890 or 1942. In a bad lens, a man's best friend is still his horse. Say, what's the rope for? To catch Indians? Nope. The rope's like a pair of pants with us. It sort of goes with the man. Well, it don't make him a man. It's time you hillbillies are growing up and leaving your toys at home. You better go easy on those spurs. That horse don't like them. When do we eat? I feel 20 years younger already. <laughs> There's only one fly in the ointment. <laughs> and here he comes now. Way up in the sky. Then saddle your worries to a cowboy song and yodel your troubles away. Saddle your worries to a cowboy song and yodel your troubles away. Brand all your sorrows as you go along with a yippee I O I Y. Throw a rope around the sun as he rolls by So you can keep him shining bright way up in the sky Then saddle your worries to a cowboy song And yodel your troubles away then saddle your worries to a cowboy song and yodel your troubles away. Pat! Hey, Pat! Well, I didn't expect anything like this. You gentlemen probably would like something a little more nourishing than song. Won't you come in? Yes, thank you. Right. You might as well pay up right now. Oh, quit whittling to keep your courage up. You're licking, you know it. Quit shoving me. I work here. Yeah, and I miss Tara Star Border. Stand aside there. Look there. You old 
trick ain't fair. That's the desert tornado. I told you he'd win in a walk. Huh? Look who just come in. Princess Lady. Ha, <laughs> ha. She probably got in so far ahead that after she had a square meal, she went out for a stroll. Then that moth-eating pelican of yours snuck up. See? That's a victory look in her eye. Why, you old faker, are you trying to weasel out of this bet? Yeah. The bet ain't got nothing to do with it. I'm just trying to make sure that Princess Heidi ain't the victim of a colossal fraud and a gigantic injustice. What do you say we race him again tomorrow, huh? Wanna go out for a smoke? No, thanks. I wouldn't miss this for anything. You better tell them now. I'll bring him into the parlor, Carol. All right. Come on, Roy. Chin up. Everything's going to come off all right. Oh, I hope so. But when they find out we've deceived them, I'm well, afraid... We didn't deceive them. All we did was invite them for a ride. Thanks to you. No matter how it turns out, I want you to know how grateful I am. Thanks. <clears throat> Mayor of Whitaker City and charter member of the Vaqueros, I've got a confession to make. We didn't ask you gents down here just to show you a good time. We wanted you to take a look at Miss Stevens' mine. Stevens? I thought that name sounded familiar. I'm not surprised, Mr. Moreland. I've written you three letters, and I believe Mr. McMahon was unlucky enough to get four. Oh, well, you've got a proposition requiring a stamp mill and transportation facilities and any number of things that... Miss Stevens, did you ever hear of priorities? I explained all that in my letter. I'm afraid I didn't read that far. Well, that's no reason for tricking us into coming down here. Oh, but that wasn't her idea, that was mine. You can't expect us to thank you for that. <laughs> However, I think that Mr. Prentice and Mr. McMahon and myself will be very glad that you did. Because while this is a very good sample of gold ore, its real value lies in its high tungsten content. Getting a machine to work a gold mine would be very difficult because of priorities. But tungsten is a vital war mineral. When can we see this mine? Well, I think we can handle that all right. Can't we? The first thing in the morning. You see, we're riding into the Badlands anyway, and we're camping at Willow Springs tomorrow night. Now, the mine isn't very far out of the way. You can go by car, and I'll follow with the horses. Then we'll ride on and meet the Vaqueros. Well, at least we won't lose out on the ride. After all, that's what we thought we were invited here for. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, but uh, I have an important business call to make and didn't realize there wouldn't be a telephone here. Do you suppose... Why, certainly. There's uh, one on the main highway at Hank's gas station. You're welcome to use my car. The keys are in it. Oh, thank you. Hello, Louie. Wait a minute. Hey, buddy, do something, will you? Check the oil and the batteries. Where's all this friendly service I hear about? Tomorrow's the day. Swell. Nobody wise? Wise, say, these yokels still think it's 1890. Everything set at your end? It's in the bag. You got that old desert rat ace Brody under control? Sure, he's right here. Sleeping as dead as when we first saw him in that bar. Okay, now listen. Sure, you've got everything you need. We'll meet you at the lunch stop. Don't let Gabby drive you over a cliff. I'll follow with the horses. You needn't hurry. I'm so stiff from riding, I can't look a horse in the face. 
You'll be stiffer than that when Gabby gets through with you in that thing. How's for a little excitement to show the folks back home? Such as? You know, a hold-up or something like they had in the old days. Uh, you and those cowboys you work with could come riding in, shooting and yelling and capture us. I guess we could at that. All right, gather around, boys. We've got a battle coming up. six weeks with government help. Well, Mike, that puts it right up to you. You're the machinery man. I suggest we operate along the partnership line we discussed last night. Uncle Sam's going to be mighty pleased to see this tungsten. What's the verdict? <laughs> I don't reckon I have to ask that. Are you gentlemen ready to go? Mr. Mayor, after your car, that horse looks pretty good to me. <laughs> yeah? Well, at least Carol don't mind my car. No, come on, Gabby. I'll drive her to the ranch and join you in the morning. You always did have all the luck, Gabby. You're dang tootin'. What happened? Well, fellas, from now on, Carol's claim won't be just a hole in the ground. It'll be a mine. Yeah! Yeah! Say, Bob, you and the boys better take the chuck wagon and go on ahead and get supper stone. Right. If you like a lot of room around to roam in, where any place you stop your heart's at home in, if you like to see a camper in the gloaming, there's an open range ahead. Some folks will spend a lifetime searching far and near for something that's always been waiting, waiting for them right here. If you like a lot of room around the gloaming, Where's that coming from? I thought we were miles from nowhere. That's the boys. There's their campfire. Let's eat! <laughs> Up in the sky, keep a bright sun shining. Out of the west, let a clean wind blow. Here in your heart, there'll be no more pining. Or somewhere else to go. If you like to hear the prairie wind a-wailing. And watch the snowy clouds above the sailing. Boy, am I hungry. You just thought it was 1890. All right, get him up. Get him up and get back. We're not kidding this time. It's the real thing. Go on, back up. Take their guns, Bill. You guys had a swell time snooting me, didn't you? Well, it's gonna cost you about 50 grand per snoot. That plane here? Yeah, and it was a cinch. Take Rogers and his gang back there and tie him up. Red, Pete, you heard what he said. All right, move on out. Go ahead. Rogers, I guess us Easterners know something about ropes, too, huh? You all set, Muggsy? All set. You know what to do. I guess that guy meant it when he bragged about his modern methods. What's going on here, anyway? I don't know, but we can't do anything about it until we get rid of these ropes. Are yours tight? Now I know how a horse feels when you take up on the cinch. Are those guys going to leave us here until we starve to death? Not if we can get these ropes stretched. Say, a little water might do the trick. Are you game to try to make it to the spring? Holy smoke, that thing's over a quarter of a mile away from here. It'll take us a week to get there all hub tied like this. Well, that's better than lying here. Let's try it. Well, if the sidewinder can do it, I guess we can. Not me. 
Ain't you guys ever heard of cactus? about time. Yeah. Time a man was in bed. Who do you think you are? Paul Revere? What happened? Why aren't you with the Vivian? Just a snatch, that's all. A snatch? A kidnapping. The biggest one in history. I have to hand it to you, hillbillies. You're not so outdated after all. Who's been kidnapped? Not, not Mr. Morland and the others. Mr. Morland and all the others. Don't just sit there. Say something. What happened? Where are they? How do I know where they are? What do I know about the Badlands? You mean they took Roy and the rest of the boys away, too? I mean Roy and all the boys took them away. Stand on your feet, you lion buzzard. It's against my principles to shoot a man sitting down. You don't have to take my word for it. It's all right there on film. I was off shooting some scenery when I pulled a snatch, so I photographed the whole thing and then slipped away. We ought to get to a phone and notify the families. Then we can hold a meeting here in the morning and decide what we're going to do. The film ought to be developed by then. Excuse me. Put that heater away. Heater? Out in this country, we call it a cooler. I don't know why that guy don't get here with that film. What difference it make? If that stuff shows Roy and the boys committing a kidnapping, I'll eat it. This desert makes you city dudes kind of crazy sometimes. I'm not so sure that you took any movies, or that there was a kidnapping. The pictures will show that. Keep your shirt on. And if you did, it's high time we were out trying to round up Rogers and his gang. Here comes the film now. When you see these pictures, you'll know those kidnappers mean business. If we make a move... Here, I'll take that. All right, Mr. Conway, Peter Morland's lawyer. This is Mr. Reed, who represents Prentice and McMahon. Have you heard anything? We chartered a plane and came as fast as we could. This fellow here claims he's gonna show us what happened. You're just in time. All right, pull him over. Hang on. They turned on us so fast, nobody had a chance. I just swore it couldn't be. I just swore. Well, I knew Roy was about to lose his ranch and needed money. No wonder he was anxious to get them rich fellas down here. What's that? Well, it's a plane. Maybe it's from the kidnappers. I told you those guys knew their stuff. Police interference means death of all concern. $250,000 by tonight. You will be watched. Don't try to pull anything. Remember, we shoot on sight. The rest is just routine about where and when to leave the money. They got the signatures here of Moreland, Prentice, and McMahon. Are those genuine? Where are we going to get a quarter of a million dollars by tonight? Why, we local people couldn't dig up half that much in a month. Or in a month? Well, uh, we're empowered to pay any ransom. We'll take care of the whole thing temporarily. But you'll have to settle with our clients later. All right, we'll do it. You get the money and I'll act as payoff man. You're stretched, Danny? Yeah, I think so. I've never been so glad to see you before. He sure did a good job of hog tying. Just good enough. Huh? I've got an idea if they'd tied us up as good as they knew how, we couldn't have gotten loose water or no water. You mean they wanted us to get loose? 
We've got to get the other boys loose and find our horses. And try to catch an airplane? We've got to get word to the sheriff. They didn't even unsaddle. Hey, Roy, come here. Here's our guns. Those guys are mighty sure of themselves. And they're still loaded. There's no doubt about it. They wanted us to escape, all right. And not too soon, but with our guns. They can't want us to give the alarm or to chase them. Well, they didn't do it out of kindness. Let's go. Rogers and his gang now. We'll go back up Pico Cannon and wait for him. Come on. I think I'm beginning to understand what this is all about. We'll ride on to Carroll's ranch and make sure. Okay. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? I don't know. What do you want me to say? I'd like you to explain this crazy kidnapping business. Well, don't act like we did it. Well, I don't know why not. I saw you do it with my own eyes. No, wait a minute. We've just been shot at by the sheriff, and now you claim you saw us do something we didn't do. I'm afraid you're the one that's going to do some explaining. Mr. Harmon took movies of the whole thing. I know what she means, Roy. That Harmon feller had a stage of fake holdup. It was when you were off at the mine. So that's it. That's why Harmon wanted us to escape with our guns. We wouldn't look guilty unless we were on the loose. But if he took those pictures while those mining men were off with me, you didn't see us in Harmon's movies. I certainly did. Oh, wait a minute, did I? I was also confused. I guess we just took it for granted that you were there. We weren't. That ought to prove that those movies weren't of the real kidnapping. Try and make it to the car. idea. You were saying something and I wanted to hear the rest of it. Then you don't think we're guilty? I'm listening. All right, we'll head back to the ranch. But those deputies will be there. Well, they'll be gone by now, given a description of this car to every cop in the state. This is a time for horses. Why don't you hide out in the hills someplace? We can't. We've got to keep those thugs from ever collecting the ransom money. Kidnappers don't get their ransom money, they'll kill all the victims. They'll kill all the victims if they do get it. Everything Harmon's done proves that he never intends to let any of those fellows live to identify him. The second he collects, they're goners. Gosh, I never thought of that. Say, did the ransom note say where the payoff was to take place? Yes, on the Indian Wells Road, somewhere near Sentinel Rock. Sentinel Rock? Well, that's where I'm heading right now. But they said the place would be watched. I'll have to risk it.
We've got to get the boys out of jail. Well, how are we going to do that with everybody in town shooting at us? Well, that's for you to figure out, Pat. I'll tell you how to start. Gosh, I wish you would. Well, first, you've got to get those movies of Harmon's. You've got to sneak them out of his room somewhere and make the sheriff look at them. And be careful you don't get shot. Be careful that. Sure, I'll do the best I can, but there's one thing I don't understand. I'm going in town to get those movies. They'd be shooting at you from every window. Hey, I ain't letting any girl do my work. Or am I? J.B., November 4th, 1883. I'll bet there hasn't been anybody in the place since. Could probably tumble down on our heads any minute. I'm afraid that's the least of our worries now, Mac. Come on, break it up. This ain't a director's meeting. I wish I could sleep like that guy. Yeah. I think he was walking in his sleep when he showed us this hole. Hey, get away from there. You want lights going all over the desert? I well, said to keep a lookout. All right, then get outside and look. And stay away from that blanket. Did Joe call? Yeah. We'll get him back. This is Joe. Give the signal. Okay. Louis? Yeah, Joe. Man's the payoff man. Model T4. You know the rest. Start now. It'll take a couple of hours to get there. Bugsy? Yeah? Let me know by short wave as soon as Louis gets back at the door. Then blow up both entrances. Sure, I understand. Come on, Felton. Okay, douse that light. So long, fellas. See you in the night spot. Be careful nobody steals that before you get there, Mayor. Don't you worry. No crook's gonna get this money. and tell him to bring over his movie projector. I'll do nothing of the kind. No girl's gonna threaten me. I'm not threatening you. This is. Phone Jim Clancy.
Yeah, it looks like it's all here. Certainly it's all there. How about them poor folks you skunks kidnapped? Where are they? Up in an old rustler's hideout. But you won't have to worry about them anymore, Grandpa. Princess, good old princess. Make it fast, princess. Just like you're going to beat the desert tornado. mangy bunch of feathers. Uh, she has something tied to her leg. Huh? She has. Look. I guess that proves what I've been telling you, Sheriff. Well, it proves that Roy and his horse weren't in those movies, all right. I guess those mining men weren't there either. Then you let the boys out and arrest Harmon? Well, not so fast. Still don't prove that these boys weren't in on it. Well, if I was to let them go and they turned out to be guilty, I'd get lynched. And all the best I can do for you is to check on Harmon. But, Sheriff, you need the boys to help you catch the real kidnappers. I've got deputies to do that. Besides, I promised the families that I wouldn't move until they said so.
Hey, here's a note from Gabby. Says where the kidnap victims are. What are you talking about? You're a kidnapper yourself. Oh, you think so? Well, take a look at this. All right, I'll let them out. We'll head up that way. No time to lose. Go through and tell the boys to blow the other entrance. Be ready to scram. I'm telling the boys at the other end to set her off. Get the dynamite and light a five minute fuse, then beat it for the plane. Easy, fella, you're hurt. I'm all right. Yeah. Well, 
Looks like we're all here. Yeah, I guess the old Western methods are still the best after all. Well, I ain't sure about that. You know, them newfangled bulletproof vests come in handy once in a while. <laughs> Well, uh, I don't know about this. We never had a girl of a carol before. Oh, that's all right. You never had guests of honor before. You never had a kidnapping before. <laughs> we always finish our race before, and boy, cracky, we're going to finish it. <laughs> Down the trail we roll along in the land of destiny. There's a rainbow high in the prairie sky like the smile of eternity. Down the trail we press along Till the happy day is through And we sing our song as we roll along Down the trail 